previously on Science for All. These balls are made of hexagons and pentagons. That means six-sided shapes and five-sided shapes. But why? Could we make a better design of soccer balls? Could we make them more round? And now the answer. Back in those days, balls were made of leather. So you had these flat sheets of leather and you had to sew them together to make up a round ball. Now the shape that they got back then was not made of pentagons and hexagons like the classical balls that we now have. They were made of mostly rectangles. But somehow for the 1970 World Cup, the greatest World Cup of all time, they decided to change the design of the ball. Adidas came up with a new shape of the ball, a new way of sewing together flat sheets of paper to make something round. So how can you make the roundest possible shape? By sewing together flat sheets of paper? Well, as it turns out, it's a very complicated mathematical question. One thing that you clearly want is for the shape that you attempt to be as regular as possible. Now, the good thing about regular solids is that we already know what they are. In fact, in ancient Greece, Plato had discovered that there were only five kinds of possible perfectly regular solids. Can't we think of a sixth platonic solid? No. And here's why. The faces of the regular solids must be identical. So an important characteristic of a regular solid is the number of edges of its faces. Moreover, the corners of a regular solid must be indistinguishable as well. This means in particular that all corners must be adjacent to the same number of faces. Now, the number of faces at a corner must be at least three, otherwise we would have a solid with no volume. But in addition, the angles of the faces at a corner cannot add up to 360 degrees or more, as otherwise the faces would be bending away and wouldn't be able to make up a volume. Now, if you choose your faces to be triangles, this means that at each corner you can have either 3, 4 or 5 faces, which corresponds to respectively the tetrahedron, the octahedron, and the icosahedron. If you want your faces to be squares instead of triangles, you can only have three faces per corner, and this corresponds to a cube. Similarly, if your faces are pentagons, you can only have three per corner, in which case you get a dodecahedron. And that's it. Because if your faces have more than five edges, you cannot fit three of them at a corner without equaling or exceeding 360 degrees. So back to our soccer pollen. What is the best shape for the soccer ball? Well, it's the roundest of all regular solids, and that's the icosahedron, the one that's made of five triangles at each corner. Yeah, but the icosahedron is not that round, is it? Well, you're right, actually. The icosahedron is not that round. So, how can we make it rounder? Well, let's just cut the corners. Let's just make the corners flatter. Now what we get once we do that for all corners is a solid that's made of hexagons and pentagons. Yes, that's exactly the design of the classic soccer ball. It's called the truncated icosahedron because basically we started with an icosahedron and we've just truncated all of its corners. So thanks to Adidas, since 1970, football players have been playing around with a truncated icosahedron. Now that's pretty awesome. And for 36 years, it seems like the right ball for playing soccer. But in 2006, Adidas did even better. Wait, I thought that the truncated icosahedron was the roundest possible solid with 32 panels or less. Do they have more panels now? No. As Adidas found it out, you could do round the shape with fewer panels. The key is to make the edges of the faces curved. 
And that changed everything. 2006, Adidas introduced the Team Geist. This ball is made of only 14 faces. And yet it's rounder than the truncated icosahedron. Wait, I don't understand how they came up with that. What they did is they started with a cube and then they truncated the corners of the cube, just like we did for the icosahedron. But then they made the edges round. And when you curve the edges in the right way, you get the team geist. Isn't it amazing? Next in 2010, In 2010, they introduced the Yabulani. Yabulani? This ball is a truncated tetrahedron, which means that the number of faces that is going to be made of is going to be the number of faces of a tetrahedron plus the number of corners of a tetrahedron. That's four plus four, which makes up eight panels. And yet, the surface is much rounder. In fact, both the Timgeist and the Yabulani was criticized for being pitch volley-like balls, which means that the trajectory of the balls were very hard to predict. That makes up a lot of goals, but players complained. And the reason why these balls have this sort of behavior is probably because they are much rounder. And this, in effect, creates more turbulences behind the ball. Finally, for the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. Brazil. Humiliation. For the 2014 World Cup, Adidas introduced the brazooka. Well, that's not really a brazooka because it's made of hexagons and pentagons, but the drawings on top of the ball are the ones of this brazooka. And you can actually count the number of faces of the brazooka. It has only six faces. It's actually a cube. Here are the different faces of the brazooka. You can see that they are sort of star-shaped squares. Anyways, here's how they should be sewn together. This net is exactly the net of a cube, isn't it? So what happens to the corners of the brazooka cube? Aren't they going to be pointy? Well, no. And that's because the corners of the faces of the brazooka make up a 120 degree angle put three 120 degree angles together and you get a full turn, which is totally flat. Really, I'm telling you, this World Cup ball is a wonderful piece of mathematics, but it's also an amazing feat of technology, as you can find it out with this ESPN video. So in the last World Cup, we've gone from 32 panels to 14 panels to eight panels, then six panels. I wonder how many panels Adidas is going to come up with for the next World Cup ball. I'm going to guess four. Hey, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Now I have to apologize actually for the last two videos because I told you I was going to talk about curved spaces and actually none of the surfaces are shown is round. Really the, the flat torus is actually flat and balls are actually made of flat surfaces. So I think it's time now for us to talk about curved spaces and curved surfaces and that's what we're going to do next time and we're going to do so by talking about maps. Now this is a map of the world, probably not the one you're used to and my question to you is, is this map wrong? So, is this map wrong? This is what I want you to think about for next time. And if you've enjoyed this video, please, please, please share this video. Please show it to your friends. Show them how cool and awesome mathematics can be. You can subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss the future videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. If you want to know more about soccer balls, you can check this article that I wrote. It's a Science for article. Uh, mainly about uh, the brazooka, this uh, cubic ball. 
world. I've also put an awesome link here to another YouTube video about soccer balls by uh, Math Tipping Points. This guy is doing awesome videos, really. Check him, check him out. He doesn't have nearly as many viewers as he would deserve. And I hope I'll see you next time.